pure water tutorials uh, with the arcade machine cabinet. Um, the already did the cabinet itself and the dome screen, and we also hid the glass case. It's going to go over everything. So to get that back, um, you can just go to right click, unhide all, and that will bring it right back in the direction. So the first thing that we're going to do with this is we're going to replace it into the cabinet. So the first thing that we want to do is go to our right view, or whatever view you have it oriented in, and go over to hierarchy, and go to effect pivot only, and we're going to center the pivot to the object. Um, so you're going to notice the gizmo moves right back to the center of the screen. So we're going to um, turn off effect pivot only, and we can move this right back into place. So let's put that right in there. And it's hard to see from this viewport, so if you want to work in all four viewports at this point in time to see where exactly it's lined up, um, that could be beneficial. So it looks like we can push it back just a tad more. And then um, we have a gap up here at the top, um, a little bit of gap at the sides, and we're looking good on the bottom. So let's go ahead and go to our second scale tool and let's scale it in all three directions here. And as you can see, this is actually coming out of the side, so let's just tailor it down in the Y direction, and this looks pretty good. Um, so with this, we're actually going to apply a glass material, or a transparent material later on, so you can see behind the screen. Um, but we're gonna save that for another tutorial. So let's actually go ahead and right click and hide that again. And we're going to start adding some final details to our cabinet here. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make this screen pop out just a little bit more. So I'm going to go to this casing around it, and I'm going to select these four polygons and the ones in the middle. And I'm going to detach this object. So under Edit Poly, there is a button called Detach. And we're going to go ahead and just call this screen case. Um, I like to go ahead and rename my objects just so they're easier to access, but sometimes I forget, so do what you'd like. Um, so now as you can see, um, this object is separate from this object, which is what we wanted to do. So I want to start off by um, adding a turbo smooth modifier to it. Now when you add turbo smooth, you're going to see that it looks pretty bad. Um, but if we bump up the number of iterations here, let's say to three, we get a little bit more geometry to work with and a smoother result. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over here to Isoline Display. Um, and actually, for now, let's not do that. Um, so let's go back to Editable Poly, and we're going to start to clean this up a little bit. So notice the Turbo Smooth is the stronger modifier in a sense, so we're not going to see it if we go to our Editable Poly modifier below. So that's where you want to go check your Show End Result toggle. And if we go over to our Edge Mode, um, we can start to edit this. Now with your Edge Mode selected, you have this orange cage that shows up on your original geometry, which is what we want to see. Um, and we want to start adding in some edge loops that are going to help clean this up just a little bit. Now, you can go over here to edit, and you can use your swift loop like we were using in a couple of the other tutorials. But what I want to do instead um, is I want to have a little bit more control over it. So I'm going to select all my horizontal edges here. Um, you can do this by clicking one and saying ring, um, and holding down control for the other, and also saying ring for that. Or you can just use your marquee selection tool and both work fine. So, once your edges are selected, we're going to go over here to our Connect tool, and you're going to see that we have this square shape that pops up, which is what we want. So we want two edge segments, and then let's actually increase this pinch um, to maybe something more like 93. That looks good. We'll say OK. Um, and let's do that again in the other direction. So I'm going to do my marquee selection around my vertical edges, say Connect. And we want the same inputs here, so we're just going to go ahead and say OK. And this looks pretty good. So as I'm going to move this out, I'm seeing that my uh, pivot isn't oriented the way that I want it. So let's go to Hierarchy, Effect Pivot Only, Center to Object, and turn that off. 
All right, so now I can actually bring my screen out just a little bit more, and that's looking pretty good. Um, but I actually want this to come out of the cabinet so I can actually have some detail here. And if you're looking at this, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and isolate this. Um, we don't have much going on. So if you look at your cabinet here, there's actually a big space in between the front and the actual cabinet here. So we want to fix that. And the way that we're going to do that is we are going to isolate the object again. And we're going to create some geometry in the back here. So if we go down to Edible Poly um, and we go over to our border, we can select our outside borders. So you can see that that's selected in yellow. Now, you're going to notice that I have both an inside border um, and, which is right here actually, and I have an outside border. But if you try and select any of these edges in the middle, um, you're not going to be able to select them with the border because they are indeed edges. The part that makes border different is that um, it is on the side of a polygon, there's, there's no polygons behind it. So for example, like this line here has a polygon um, on both sides, so you can only access it by your edge modifier. So with your border selected, you can actually hold down your shift tool, your shift key, I'm sorry, and drag back along the x-axis to add geometry. So you're going to see that you have this new geometry that got uh, brought up, and it's looking pretty good. So the only thing that I want to change here is I actually want to make sure that this is in my local viewport. So let's drag that shift back again, and I have some nice dimensions to work with. So let's go ahead and bring everything back here. And let's work on bringing this piece, changes to local again, just where we're at. Let's bring this up a little bit. And um, we have that nice separation there. Let's see. Let's bring it up a little bit more. Um, so it's not overlapping. You might find that you have to um, do a select and scale to make it fit the way you want, which is okay. Something like that looks good. And then with this piece, um, we can see that's actually coming out of the sides here. So let's scale that down, down along the Y. And we can also see these corners here, so we can move this out a little bit more. It might take some playing around with just to get the right dimensions here. Oops. All right, so that actually looks pretty good. Um, and that's concluding the detail for my cabinet. Now, the couple other things I want to do um, that I did forget about is I'm going to unhide. Oops. I'm going to do unhide all, and then I'll bring this screen back. I want to add um, some thickness to the screen because obviously, if uh, you're looking at a piece of glass, it is not just um, like a piece of paper thin. So we're going to add a shell modifier to that. Um, you can see that you can adjust the inner and the outer amount, um, and that's going to increase or decrease the thickness there. So let's go ahead and just make this like 0.25, something pretty small. And if you see here, if I put it back over my case, um, you can actually see the screen behind it, which is not what we want to do. So I'll hide the selection again, and that just means I need to push these back a little bit more, because I have them too far out.
All right, that looks good. So let's go ahead and change the color of the screen here. We'll change the object color. And then you're pretty much done with the modeling of your cabinet. So if you want to do um, a couple more things, like round out the edges of your cabinet here, a super easy way to do that is to go to your polygon selection mode, um, click on one of these polygons, um, hold down shift and click on the one next to it, and that will select all the polygons in the ring. Hold down control for the other side, hold down shift, and that'll do the same thing. So using the tool bevel, which many of you have probably used before, um, we want to make sure that we're beveling this by local normal. So you can see that that is extruding out um, each polygon as um, an individual entity um, instead of by a group, which is making it look really weird. So we're going to decrease this bevel amount just to something around here. That looks good. And then the bevel amount itself, you see how it's, it's this dark red? Um, you see some like flashy lines. That means that the bevel is actually crossing over itself and we have overlapping polygons, which does not look good. So we want this to be like this nice bright red. Actually bring this down a little bit. And once you say okay, um, you'll see you have a nice rounded edge to your cabinet. So that is all we're doing for the modeling of the cabinet itself. In the following tutorials, I'll show you how to um, unwrap this and add materials and um, we can also add the joysticks on here.